back to Concepts, the modern design tool for creative thinking. This design workflow will focus on architecture, where we'll build a scale model from scratch by experimenting with different mediums and desktop manufacturing methods. You may have seen our summer house concept appear in an earlier video. We liked the concept so much, we thought it deserved its own life in 3D. The Concepts app is made for building on your ideas, so we began by drawing and writing down all our thoughts on the nice infinite canvas. We didn't have a specific island or scale in mind when we created this drawing, so our constraints were based on the equipment we'd use to build it. Some quick measurements and concepts place the scale at 1 to 235, which happily is the same scale of some passenger plane to model rockets. You can check out our other videos for more on setting scale and concepts. With those basics in place, we started the 3D modeling process by exporting the organic strokes we made of the ground layers as an SVG file and opened it in Autodesk's Fusion 360. Those same vectors can be used with laser or vinyl cutters, industrial water jets, but we're using Inventable's desktop CNC mill, the Carby, as it's quiet enough for a studio environment that will make light work of soft materials like wood, plastics, or aluminum. More on that in a minute. Because the lines came from Concepts as vectors, all we had to do was close the paths and start extruding. Within a few minutes, the island was ready for cutting. The aesthetic we're after is wood grain, so we found some nice cheap plywood to test things out. After gluing together a few pieces from the bin, we cut the base shape on the bandsaw and tossed it in the carvey, which has a bed size close to standard A4 paper. Placing the piece in securely is important, so it doesn't fly off with the rotational energy of the bit, so we use these handy screwing clamps. Fusion 360 gave us issues exporting the base model, so we went back to Concepts, exported the raw geometry to Illustrator instead to close the pads, then imported the SVG into Easel, a browser-based cam app from the makers of Carvey. Then we relaxed a bit while the machine did its work. model was easier to produce in real life. Sketching geometry goes much faster with a reference, so we used screenshots of the main cabin from our earlier Shaper 3D massing study, and a concept sketch for the sauna. At this scale, some of the elements would have come out too small for us to sand them without breaking, so we made some tweaks. The dock is just a bunch of rectangles, so simple enough to be modeled without a reference. Then we exported to STL, brought it into Preform by Form Labs, which automatically calculates the required supports. After hitting the print button, the machine does its magic. If you're not familiar with the Form 2, it uses a process called SLA, or stereolithography, in which a tank of liquid resin is cured by UV laser in layer increments roughly the size of a human hair. then peeled away and repeated until it's done. About three hours later, once the prints came off, we soaked them in isopropyl alcohol, or denatured in our case, to remove the extra resin, let it dry for a minute or two, then started clipping supports. If you're after a smooth finish, you'll have to file down the nubs and, optionally, spray it with a few coats of primer and acrylic paint. It's pretty fun for those of us who like quiet focus time. So 
So the island is ready and the buildings are ready, but it's feeling a bit dry. So let's make an acrylic mold and add clear epoxy resin to make ourselves a lake. The two-part epoxy resin we use is a thermosetting polymer, meaning that the curing process is based on heat rather than an evaporating solvent. We mixed all our ingredients to get the color effects we're after, poured it in the mold, and then this happened. Okay, so that's not good, maybe. It's definitely not acting the way it should. Like if it stays there, we're still good. Mm -hmm. Looks like waves, and we can say that we did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Of course we did test castings before this pour. It could have been the amount of resin we poured at once, or some chemical reaction from the additives we used. Just another reminder that reality provides constraints, and you really only learn by doing. So get out there and make something. Subscribe for more builds and tutorials, and happy creating. This has been a Top Hatch, wishing you luck.